This is Kent Jarrell on Capitol Hill. Retired General Richard Secord, a key witness in the Iran-Contra scandal, begins his defense. I'll have a report. Gary Hart responds to reports that threaten to damage his presidential aspirations. And computer technology provides war criminal. And a rookie Orioles pitcher comes oh so close to a no-hitter in Minnesota. Eyewitness News Nightcast is next. Your basic soft wheat bread has about a smidgen of whole wheat. But new Wonder Soft 100% whole wheat bread has a whole passel. And that's a difference we can all sink our teeth into. Wow. They haven't seen any wild animals yet. My mother says my father... America. Just a part of life in America. Wonder bread. Wonder bread. Americans Caribbean. More gentle breeze. More colorful shores. More of everything. With service to 11 islands and packages from $309 to $599. American Airlines. Something special to the Caribbean. Channel 9, Washington's number one newscast, Eyewitness News, Nightcast. Good evening, I'm Gordon Peterson. After months of anticipation, the Iran-Contra hearings got underway today on Capitol Hill. The lead-off witness was retired Air Force Major General Richard Secord. He provided new details on the money trail. Kent Jarrell reports. Richard Secord told of a shadow world that set up a network to supply the Contras and sell weapons to Iran. There were secret messages to the White House, airdrops into Nicaragua, meetings with CIA Chief Casey, and meetings with Oliver North. There was indeed compensation paid to the private parties, but no one undertook these missions for compensation alone. We believed very much in the significance of what we were doing and that our conduct was in furtherance of the president's policies. I also understood that this administration knew of my conduct and approved it. Secord testified $18 million in profits were made from the Iran arms sale. Only $3.5 million went to aid the Contras. $3 million was used to ship weapons to Iran. $8 million is still held in an account for Albert Hakim, a Secord associate, an Iranian-born arms dealer. About a million dollars went to other projects, radio telephones for an unnamed Caribbean country, expense money for federal drug agents working to free U.S. hostages in Lebanon, and to buy a small ship for another project run by Oliver North. Two million is still unaccounted for. Committee members are upset about the money trail. The Contras did not do well at all. They were betrayed, it seems, by a group of profiteers. Secord indicated at one point today that they acquired another asset, a ship that was to be used for, for yet another purpose, which was not fully identified. And so I think what we're beginning to see is the, is the outlines of this network that uh, officials, in a sense, in and out of government had helped to, to put into place. Secord criticized Attorney General Meese for making the scandal public last November, and Secord defended the secrecy involved in his efforts. That's right. This is a private effort, and we didn't want to be exposed. We didn't want to be blown in the press. Why? See what happened when we were blown? It was, it was just a, it was a... It was absolute chaos. We were accused of uh, everything uh, under the sun. So you anticipated that you would be accused of everything under the sun? Without question, uh, given the, the state of our media. Secord is testifying without immunity from prosecution. He'll be back on Capitol Hill tomorrow to face more questions on the money trail and on who in the administration knew what he was up to. Kent Sherrill, Eyewitness News, Nightcast. Senator Hal Heflin of Alabama is on the Joint Committee. Senator Heflin, you are by reputation a man with a high regard for the rule of law as befits a former Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court. Did you hear anything today that offends your legal sensibilities? 
Well, uh, yes, I have a number of different things that would indicate that uh, the Bolin Amendment, uh, which prohibited certain activities, uh, was not being complied with. There were a lot of different things that were going on relative. You've got to put the Bolin Amendment in proper perspective. There are different phases of it. But it would appear to me that uh, they were violating the law relative to the Bolin Amendment in this connection. Well, Secord's argument seems to be that if your heart was in the right place and you were following the president's wishes, expressed or unexpressed, everything else is irrelevant. Well, there are those that believe that the end justifies any means, but uh, we don't follow that in America. We feel like that you have to comply with the law. We respect the rule of law, and it's very important that we do so. Senator, let me ask you this, and uh, you, of course you're going to be speculating to some extent. Do you anticipate any explosive... Uh, revelations in these hearings, or do you expect a lengthy and complicated paper chase here? Well, I expect uh, both. Uh, I think there'll be some surprises, but we're going to have a rather lengthy